Okay. Good morning. Um, I'm Dr. Caroline Ginzali. I'm one of the two, one of two faculty coordinators for the <coughs> thermal fluid and energy systems concentration area. The other faculty member um, who will be helping out with advising is Dr. Brandon Dixon. So uh, just a brief introduction to the concentration area, which is a, a bit rehashed from the short version that we gave a, a few weeks ago. But um, in general, this area encompasses the sciences of thermodynamics, heat transfer, and fluid mechanics. So what do we learn in each of these areas? What kind of class do these classes form a part of the core ME curriculum? But then this concentration area will then build on these core courses to get into more further, deeper questions in fluid, thermal, and energy systems. So in thermodynamics, uh, this is where we study the science of energy and its conversion to either work or heat transfer. Uh, things like IC engines and phase changes of fluids is uh, our topics of study in thermo. In heat transfer, this is where we uh, study the transfer of energy, not the conversion of energy, but the transfer of energy through mater both materials and fluids. So processes like convection and conduction, heat transfer through materials. The example here is heat transfer from a flame into uh, some water in a pot in order to boil it. Uh, fluid mechanics is where you study the mechanics of fluids, both in motion and at rest. So things like buoyant forces on, on an object in water, such as an iceberg, or the flow over an airfoil uh, for uh, providing lift for, um, for a plane. And one thing that each of these topics have in common is the topic of energy. And so these three topics sort of converge into uh, a broader uh, area energy systems where we can synthesize our knowledge from, from each of these individual uh, core courses in order to understand how to uh, design and engineer devices for efficient energy conversion. So uh, what are the career paths and research opportunities in thermal fluids and energy systems? Well, energy really does form the core uh, for a lot of these fields um, and energy is a, a certainly a, a, a hot topic right now because we're facing a fairly uncertain energy future at this time. So uh, some of the big challenges that lie ahead for you and your generation and what you'll be seeing as you transition into your career are we're seeing a transition into alternative energy sources, things like solar and wind and fuels from biomass sources. Um, all of these things um, would be future career opportunities if you were to specialize in a, in a thermal fluids energy uh, concentration area. Uh, in addition, uh, there's many opportunities for sustainable transportation. I'm sure you have all seen uh, what the vehicles on the road changing quite a bit over the last few years. We're seeing a lot more hybrid electric vehicles, uh, electric vehicles, uh, biofuel vehicles, we have flex fuel vehicles. So. Um, figuring out how to s continue to support a large number of vehicles on the road in a sustainable way is a grand challenge for you and your generation. Uh, also, uh, I'll say sustainable heating and cooling. We rely on thermal management in general to uh, both uh, heat or cool uh, technology devices, like I've given an example at the bottom, a high performance computing chip at the bottom these things generate so much uh, heat that they need to be managed in order to maintain processor speeds. And so this is a, absolutely a growing area. High performance computing in general is exploding uh, as processor power is going up and we need to find ways to manage uh, the heat loads of those computers. Um, but in addition, heating and cooling of buildings still remains a challenge um, because we're facing dwindling energy supplies. So we need to figure out how to do these things, keep all ourselves comfortable. Uh, in the hot Atlanta weather, uh, <laughs> but to do that in an efficient way and in sustainable ways. So uh, what I've shown here is a geothermal system. Um, in the schematic here is a geothermal system which uses the temperature of the ground in order to provide temperature control of your space. Um, and then I also mentioned, I had mentioned high performance computing, uh, another area uh, beyond just the cooling of these chips is actually using high performance computing in order to simulate very complex fluid dynamics and heat transfer processes. So here I'm showing a, 
a fluid dynamics of a, a swirl fuel nozzle for a, a gas turbine engine. Um, these things don't have analytical solutions. They're very challenging problems to solve. And high performance computing is opening the way to solve really complicated uh, uh, fluid dynamics and thermal problems. So, uh, you know, basically the careers that would be available to you would be focused on how do we use new energy sources, sustainable energy sources, um, how do we use devices more efficiently so that we slow our consumption of energy sources, and then finally, how do we mitigate the impact, the environmental impact of energy use? These three questions are all huge areas right now, and there are a lot of careers in addressing these, these three areas of energy um, out there. Okay, so some of the people at Georgia Tech who do, who work and research in thermal fluids and energy systems, uh, the core of uh, thermal fluids and energy systems would be covered by the faculty in the heat transfer combustion and energy systems group. That's the cluster of people at the top of this slide. Um, but also involved with thermal research, of course, is the fluid mechanics faculty. They're doing more fundamental fluid mechanics um, work. We also have people who cross over from <coughs> manufacturing, nuclear, and MEMS. Um, to touch on energy subjects. So, I mean, energy in general is very multidisciplinary, and especially when you combine the topics of thermal fluids and energy together, you get a, a wide range of topics, everything from fundamental fluids, fundamental heat transfer, all the way up to applied energy conversion in propulsion and land engine devices and uh, novel heat management devices. Srinivas Garamella does heating and cooling systems for thermal management. Um, trying to improve energy efficiency of those devices via energy recovery. Um, I myself do research in internal combustion engines and how to convert uh, fuels more efficiently in those engines and also how to transition to using biofuels in engines. Um, so some examples, uh, as I've discussed, some specific examples of research at, at, at Georgia Tech being done by some of these faculty. I mentioned Trinovas Garamella on the left. He's developing totally new uh, devices for refrigeration and uh, heating and refrigeration systems that are enable uh, more sustainable uh, high efficiency heating and cooling applications. Um, Dr. Tim Lewin, whose primary appointment is in aerospace, but he also has a joint appointment in mechanical engineering. He looks at energy conversion in aircraft engines. Uh, there's an example of some, they have some optically accessible engines where they can see into the engine and put some lasers in there in order to measure specific things about the temperature or combustion process occurring inside the engine. On the right is an example of uh, imaging, a, a high-speed imaging of a diesel spray. This is done, uh, work, the type of work done in my lab where we're trying to look at the, the fundamental physics of, of controlling pollutant emissions in diesel engines. This is, again, mitigating the environmental impact of energy conversion on the environment. Um, also, Dr. Alexiev, he's active in this high-performance computing area, doing very complicated fluid dynamics simulations. Here I've shown an example where he's looking at a simulation of flapping flight. Um, and then also another topic area is uh, Dr. Yogendra Joshi. He's looking at the phase change or boiling of new heat transfer fluids that can, again, uh, convert energy in a more efficient manner. Okay, so let's talk about the requirements for concentrating in this area. Um, you, the one required course for the concentration is to take ME 4315, which is Energy Systems Analysis and Design. And then from there, you can choose four electives. And for the current choices of electives that we're offering are internal combustion engines, refrigeration and air conditioning, a class on fuel cells, an applied fluid dynamics course, a computational fluid dynamics course, a wind engineering course, and a renewable energy systems course. Most recently, there, uh, Dr. Kola has introduced a new course in nano engineering, and that's again, there's a lot of multidisciplinary uh, crossover and, and between energy and other fields. So if you had an interest in exploring other areas of energy that are less on the fluid thermal side, you could dabble in uh, nano engineering by taking that elective. So 
First, I'll, I'll just give you the, the basics for the, the required course. In the required course, uh, you basically get uh, an overview of concepts, laws, and methodologies from the thermal sciences uh, in order to analyze model and design energy systems. So it's sort of a general energy systems design class. And the prerequisites I've shown visually here basically include those core courses, I as I said before, the thermal fluids um, and heat transfer. And then what I've shown below is the, the subset of courses that are required in order to, you know, uh, meet the, or the sub prerequisites required for those, those particular courses. <clears throat> All right, so one of the electives available for you uh, to choose from is internal combustion engines. You might take this class if you're interested in a career in the sustainable transportation area even if you're interested in things like fuel cells or hybrid electric vehicles, uh, the internal combustion engine is still a central part of, of much of future transportation. And so in this course, you can basically get exposed to the principles, the engineering principles of, of IC engines and how to analyze them. Uh, the prerequisite for that course is thermodynamics. Uh, there's also a course in fuel cells, again, extending the theme on sustainable transportation. Um, you might also take this course if you're interested in sustainable power generation. So fuel cells are an option for standalone power generation. So you can get an idea of how fuel cells stack up to other conventional technology by, by taking this course. And again, the core requisite is thermodynamics. Uh, renewable energy systems is a, kind of a, an overview of many different uh, future renewable <laughs> energy uh, system options. I think that they cover solar, wind, biomass, uh, basically alternative uh, energy sources and the use of these alternative energy sources in um, power generation and, and transportation. So you, if you were interested in those two areas, this would be a good elective uh, to, to check out. Um, there's also a course in applied fluid dynamics. If you're interested in more of the core fluid dynamics science, um, and how to apply that in, in uh, actual energy conversion devices. Uh, the topics for this course change, uh, but in general, in the, in the uh, course catalog, it's just, they're described as being pulled from turbo machinery, flow measurements, compressible flows, and aerodynamics. So um, this class is, a, is a, probably a useful class if you want to study more in depth the fluid dynamics of energy conversion devices instead of the energy balance, energy <coughs> conversion as a whole. Um, also, there's a course in computational fluid dynamics. And as I said, this is definitely a, a growing area of interest um, out there. You know, uh, a lot of us, uh, <laughs> a lot of the people out there working in high performance computing are of an older generation. They're not quite used, they don't exactly know how to leverage all of the computing power that is, that is rapidly becoming available. So I think for your generation, your generation will be the generation of high performance computing. And uh, so getting a background in computational fluid dynamics uh, was probably a nice way to set yourself up for a, a, a good career in this area. Um, there's also a course in wind engineering. Uh, there's not too many prerequisites for this course, so I think it's a lower level overview of, of wind engineering, uh, wind-based power generation. Uh, and then there's also a course in refrigeration and air conditioning, so getting deeper <coughs> into the fundamentals of air conditioning and refrigeration <coughs> design. And um, I think, I'm not sure who's teaching that, but I, in general it's taught by one of the heat transfer energy and combustion faculty. Okay, and then finally, as I mentioned, uh, nanotechnology is starting to get into, uh, starting to touch the energy area. That's because nano-engineered materials are uh, possibly useful for heat recovery uh, types of um, applications. And if you wanted to understand how nano-engineering materials might help uh, con uh, in waste, waste heat recovery and things like this, uh, how they act as energy carriers or uh, for heat transfer, you could dabble in nanoengineering energy technologies, which is a new course offered, offered uh, this year by uh, Dr. Kola. All right, so I think that's the overview of all the courses. Um, I'll take any questions you guys have about the concentration area or about the courses. Yeah. I have a question, but I 
trying to get into Formula One. This would be the concentration for me. If you want to get into Formula One, well, it depends what aspect, right? So if you want to be involved in the powertrain of, you know, engine, basically engine development, this would be the area for that, for sure. Um, if you want to do things like vehicle dynamics, then I would say, no, this is not the concentration area for you. What is the, I'm sorry, you asked, what is the a what master's? Is a, what is a fitting master's uh, program for if we get into this concentration for us to continue with this uh, specific area? So you're asking about what types of research might you do in a master's degree once you have this concentration behind yeah, you? I mean, in general, a master's degree will just be mechanical engineering, so it's very broad. But the, the choice you make is in who you work with, what, ty what, who, what advisor you choose to work with, and that will dictate the type of project that you do for writing your thesis for your master's degree. So, um, you know, some of the examples of faculty, what the types of research that faculty are doing here at Georgia Tech would be types of things that you would work on in your master's degree. So you could work on, uh, you know, making internal combustion or studying how internal combustion engines can be more efficient or how they can use bio-based fuels if you were working in my group. If you were working in Srinivas Garamella's group, you could be looking at uh, heat transfer fluids and how to increase the efficiency of heat transfer for thermal management applications. Um, there are, are, like I said, just as very, there are many career opportunities in this area, and so also the list of research projects is also rather broad in this area. I mean, it could be fundamental fluid mechanics. You could be studying turbulent flow over a plate, I mean, if you really wanted to get into it. Or you can study the more applied side of, you know, how do I make an engine more efficient? There's a whole range. Um, does it come between doing this concentration and just doing the energy minor? So she asked about the energy minor and the difference between this and the energy minor. I actually don't know a lot about the energy minor. Do yeah, you Energy minor um, <coughs> gives more economics and public policy, public policy side of things. So you're going to take a required science course, and then you're going to take an economics or public policy course. And so when you do your project in the energy minor, you're going to have more of a business perspective of energy in addition to two depth courses, like probably the same courses she listed there, where her concentration is really more the you can get more side technical in depth. Yes. On this. Absolutely. Yeah. I will say that the public policy side of energy is absolutely uh, intrinsically linked to the research and the advancement of technology. So it's uh, it's not bad to want to understand. I shouldn't say it's not bad. It's 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 interesting to to link those two together, and I think it does position you for a different career. If you wanted to be more technical, then you'd probably want to choose the concentration. But if you had aspirations for a career in public policy, helping to shape environmental laws, uh, to minimize the impact of these devices on, on our lifestyle and things like that, then you might want to do the energy minor. So uh, I suppose that maybe the conversation of fluid dynamics and uh, wind engineering would be quite related or uh, well no computational fluid dynamics is taking fundamental fluid mechanics equations and uh, basically writing them out in a way that a computer can compute them. Normally when we compute analytical solutions, if we take an integral, that's something that a computer cannot do, so we have to do what we call discretization. Um, so computational fluid dynamics is about programming. It's more about programming, discretizing the equations, writing the equations in the right way so that you can solve them using a computer. So the, the emphasis is more on how do we take analytical equations that we learn about in our textbook and translate them into a numerical framework. And, um, is the declared or are chosen to, to go after taking all the fluids, so first take fluids, first take thermodynamics, all that, and then you say if you want to do the concentration? 
I think you might. Can you declare the concentration at any time, or do you have yes. to take thermal fluids and heat transfer first? No, you can declare even freshmen coming in can declare the concentration, and that's what you should do, um, so that we can track who's in the program and who's taking what classes. Yeah. Yeah. Also, like the course in wind engineering doesn't require surprisingly anything, yeah. so you could take it right away. Um, but most of that, most of the course of the electives do have a thermodynamics or fluid dynamics or heat transfer component. Yes, you can change your mind if you want to change your concentration area. Um, all you have to do is go into Oscar and change your concentration. You'll remove one and add another one. It's not hard. <laughs> It's <laughs> good, it's good. That's <laughs> what we're here for. Well, the wind engineering, is yeah. that uh, sort of aerodynamics course? Yeah, yeah, actually, I don't know a lot about the particular course. I, do you know who's teaching it, Christy? Uh, Yeah, it's yeah. It's likely to be focused on from. I, I mean, the thing is, is because there's no fluid dynamics prereq, I have to think that it's just a an overview type of course and not a, a, a technical. Let's look at the aerodynamics over a, a turbine blade kind of thing. It's kind of a mix. It is okay. Kind of okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're out of time. Thank you. Thank you.